This is a brief review of my curriculum Rocks and Dirt. Now before I even start, I think I'll tackle the elephant in the room because anytime you talk about anything related to geology, immediately the question comes up, oh, is your book secular, religious, old earth, young earth? You want to know where the author is coming from. What I've tried to do is concentrate on the basics, the physics, the chemistry of the materials, because my main concern is that you can't really have a considered opinion about the theories unless you understand the chemistry and the physics of the materials you're talking about. What will magma do and not do? What will quartz do? Can you squish limestone? I mean, these are the basic questions that you need to know before you can even have a discussion. So I really try to focus on the physics and chemistry, things that we can actually measure and see. So the curriculum comes as a paperback, and you can get the student booklet that has just the first section of it. The larger book has the student booklet and the teacher section in the back. Or you can get this as a digital download. So if you get it as the download, it's exactly the same book, just in a digital format. So the digital download allows you to be clean, green, and read it off the screen if you want to. You can just print the worksheets and the patterns for the games and things like that. So you can decide how much to print. But either way, you will need to do some printing because there's patterns and games and things in the back that will need to be printed onto cardstock. So let's start by reviewing the information in the student section. I start off with a review of the elements. This is basic chemistry. What is an element? What is an atom? What is a mineral? Because, of course, rocks are made of minerals, and minerals are made of elements, and elements are atoms. So you need to know um, basics. And then we go on to a whole chapter on minerals. And this is pretty much what you'll find in any curriculum about rocks and minerals. Defining a mineral and we do the uh, Mohs hardness scale and crystal shape, all the basic things about minerals. And then we do a whole chapter on the silicate minerals. So we're not to rocks yet. We focus on the silicates, which are minerals that are based on this silicon oxygen tetrahedron there. And we see how these, these silicate tetrahedrons join together to make lines and sheets and layers and this is called the Bowman reaction series and it's not usually introduced until college but I thought knowing about this will actually help us understand what these minerals are and so this helps us put them into groups we can understand why they're in this group because this is the shape that the molecules make so then we work our way up to the feldspars and then we talk about quartz and the piezoelectric properties of quartz which are extremely important later in the book and then we look at some kind of semi-precious gems that are silica based like opals and onyx jasper these are a lot of the times the things people really like to collect in rock collections kids love the, the silicate minerals and we always have some review questions at the back of every chapter. So then we finally get to rocks. So rocks are made out of minerals. So now we know enough about minerals that we recognize what the rocks are made out of. And we classify the rocks. Of course, this is very much like you'd, what you'd find in any other book. We have the sedimentary and igneous and metamorphic rocks. So we go through and learn about those. We learn a little bit about coal flint, oolitic chert, which is a special thing found in my area. Had to put that in. Marble. And then I have a rock song. It's about sedimentary metamorphic igneous rocks. The audio tracks for these are available either on the YouTube playlist that goes with the curriculum or I give an address here on my website where you can download the audio some uh, kind of coloring activities and then I have a whole chapter on limestone and this is really important because this is the other rock that the earth is basically made out of it's either 
carbonaceous limestone or a silicon based rock. So between the two that pretty much is most of the earth. There is a lot of limestone on the planet. We learn about the different kinds of limestone and when we say limestone that includes a lot of things like chalk and this olytic limestone. We have the coquina, travertine, there's a lot of different things that are included in the category of limestone. And to understand the chemistry of these rocks, we need to do a little bit of basic learning about these elements. Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, calcium, magnesium. And to make the chemistry painless, so I've drawn them as cute little cartoon figures. And the number of arms they have is the number of bonds they can make. So then we learn even more about limestone chemistry. And we learn about a very important equation that tells us how limestone precipitates out of water and we learn that for every molecule of limestone that's formed a molecule of carbon dioxide goes into the air. And this poses a great problem because the math shows us that most of the limestone in the world cannot be made by shelled animals like you read in so many kids books. But in a minute we'll look at some limestone that is made from animals. So there's both inorganic and organic limestone. And a lot of the inorganic limestone is found in caves. And more about caves. Caves are a very popular topic. So here is some organic limestone. This strange little creature here, I actually have an activity where you can make these. You can take a styrofoam ball and you can make one of these. They're called coccolithophores. And so the shells of little goofy looking animals like these do make up these places like the White Cliffs of Dover and there, there are also White Cliffs in Denmark. Some of the limestone type rock in the world is made by little shelled animals. So then I have a whole chapter on soil science. It's called dirt in quotes because we find out that dirt's not really a very good name for it. Soil is much better. And we find out what soil is made out of. We find out about the inorganic parts first, minerals that are in soil, and we learn about soil texture, how soils form, and a place where you can watch soils form. This is Circe Island, which uh, is less than 60 years old, and we can, we can watch soils forming. So it's kind of like a natural laboratory. It's kind of neat. And we learn about clay and how the minerals are used by plant roots. And then we meet some of the organic parts of the soil, bacteria and the fungus. We learn about humus. I show you the molecule, what humus is. We talk about what the brown stuff is besides minerals. It's these little remnant uh, little pieces, broken molecules from living things, leaves and sticks and all the things degrade to look like this. And then we meet more of the things that live in the soil. We learn about the nitrogen cycle and about soil conservation, which I had to learn about. I didn't really know much about soil conservation. And so I really learned how important it is. So I share that information with you in the text. Learn about the dust bowl, it's a terrible soil experiment. And here's more on fungi, how important they are in soil. And here's a section on diatomaceous earth. You meet more of these goofy little animals that make up some soil and rock. And then we start going deeper. So this chapter is deep down under. First we learn about some very deep holes that were drilled and what they found at the bottom. It wasn't what they expected. And then we start learning about other ways that we can find out what's deep down because we find out that we really can't drill very deep. If the earth was an apple, we can't even go through the skin. So how do we learn about the deep insides of the planet? So we learn about P waves and S waves, and I spend quite a bit of time on that, so I'm hoping the reader really understands what, what these diagrams are suggesting when we get to them. So the P waves and the S waves, by timing them, we can find out how fast they go through different parts of the earth. And then we can make an inference about what kind of rock this might be. 
So right here on this page, this is where I state very clearly the difference between a fact and an inference. And in my book, I won't tell you something is a fact if it's not a fact. The fact is that P waves or S waves travel at a certain speed through the Earth. The inference is that, oh, maybe this is iron and nickel in the core. We don't know that it's iron and nickel. That's a guess. So if a book tells you that it's a fact that the center of the Earth is made of iron and nickel, that's not true. It's an inference. Now, an inference can be true. Very often our inferences are true, but they're still inferences. So I think that's one difference between my curriculum and a lot of others is that I'm very clear about what's a fact, what's an inference, what's a theory, and I tell the reader straight up. So we looked at some more facts. What do we actually see? What do we know? What do we know about the crust of the Earth? We look at the types of rock that are found on the ocean floor, the types of rock that are found in the crust, the difference between them. So we gather a lot of facts here, things we can actually see. We learn about cracks, faults, and we can actually see these cracks. It's a fact. There's a big crack there. We learn about places where we can see layers, like the Grand Canyon. And then we learn that there's fossils in some layers, but I don't really say much about them, just that they're there. We learn about water tables, and we learn about things like oil and gas. There's a fun puzzle about which came first. You try to use logic to figure out what order those things happened in. And then I have a little bonus information about trilobites. Everyone loves trilobites. They're so cool. So I just put in some little bonus page on that. And there's also a video drawing that I'll talk about later that goes with it. And there's also a video that goes with this page. So you watch the video and you color along with me and label. And we we label all this, we learn about all these layers that we can see in the Grand Canyon. And then I come to ideas about the past. I want to discuss some ideas and see what people are thinking. So first we look at some things that we can tell about the shape of some cracks and, and uh, things called Benioff zones, fracture zones, and some more uh, earthquake activity. And during this chapter, the little thumbprint guys have a fun adventure with a time machine because I like to kind of be funny and keep it light, keep people laughing. And then we talk about the idea that someone had about the continents drifting, and we talk about the idea that this idea was not very popular at first. So this would be the information that you would find in most kids' books. This is the standard thing about um, plate tectonics. We discuss it. And then I mentioned the fact that not all scientists agree with this, and I give you the reasons why they think there's problems with this theory, and some alternatives, like surge tectonics. There's some people that think that all the features on the Earth can be explained by magma channels running underneath. And then the third idea I present is that the crust was solid and there was water underneath, and that there was a crack, and when the water came out, it did some quite devastating things and changed the shape of the Earth. So what I don't cover in this book is any cosmology. And right here, I say what cosmology is and that that's not what this book is about. This book is just about rocks and minerals and chemistry. But of course, people immediately wonder, where did the rocks come from? How old are they? How long have they been here? So then we look at some reasons why people might think the rocks are very, very old, maybe even millions of years old. We talk about the radiometric dating and some of these varve layers and why somebody would think that would indicate that, that the Earth is very old. And then we look at some data like radiocarbon data, some polystrate fossils, and some dinosaur tissue that indicate that maybe the Earth is not so old. And so the reasons why someone would think that. So you can evaluate this for yourself. The teacher section has games, crafts, labs, activities, really is a very wide variety of activities. And you can use all of them or skip some of them. It's really up to you which ones you want to do. And the activities will vary according to what type of information was in the chapter. This one, I encourage you to use a magnifier to look at some crystals. 
But if you don't have a magnifier, you can use these pictures of these. And here's a density lab, another lab. And if you have a rock and mineral ID kit, if you've purchased one or borrowed one from somebody, you can use that to supplement these activities. I don't recommend a particular place to purchase one or a particular set. I figure that they're widely available and it's up to you. If you'd like to include some actual rocks in your curriculum, that's great. You don't actually need rocks though to do this curriculum. So here's a game. You print these onto cardstock and if you don't have the digital download, if you just have this paperback, there's a place on my website where you can download this pattern and you can just print it on cardstock. Most home printers will take a medium weight cardstock. There's some crystal shapes to make. These fold up into like 3D shapes. Now if you really hate paper craft, you can just skip this. You can pick the activities that you like to do. More cards that you can print onto cardstock. There's a couple of games you can play with these cards. And there's a craft or an art project you do about agates. Plenty of lab ideas. Some review worksheets. And then there's rock cards. So the other cards were minerals. These are all rocks. And there's games about identifying the rocks and learning to recognize them. And then there's an activity about making edible rocks. You can make cookies that look like rocks. And these really do. I think my cookies really look more like rocks than any I've saw online. And there's pictures to go with the rock cookies. That's what you're trying to make your cookies look like. And here's the activity where you use these to make those little coccolithophores. And here are all the papers you need to play the limestone game. And these sheets are actually printed single-sided. You can actually remove these from the book if you don't want to print them. And there's lots of extra info in that game. Here's another paper craft. This one you make a soil profile and the box can be used for, I don't know, whatever you want to stick into it. Fill it with something or not, so see our soils on the top. And I give you the patterns right here. These are different types of soils and you can color or paint them. You'll learn about them in the text. You can make it into a little box. And there's an activity where you actually use real soil and you uh, use this chart to identify the texture, to classify the type of soil. Now here's another drawing activity where you make a copy of this for the student and give them a copy of this or they can just look at this in the book. And so you draw along with me in the video and then we draw this page and I tell you what to draw and you find out all about soil. Another lab you could do with paper and cardboard, another craft activity, and here's a lab where you make edible layers and then you use a clear straw to take a core sample and then you can eat your experiment afterwards. And here's the trilobite drawing. You make a copy of this for the student and then use the video online and draw along with me and all my students got a beautiful drawing. This is a big success. They really enjoyed this one. Some more craft projects, another experiment, and some more experiments. And then a game about famous large rocks. Things like the Rock of Gibraltar and the Luru and places like that. And we end with a quiz game, which is a nice, fun way to review what you learned in the book. So again, if you'd like to purchase this, you can get the paperback on my website or on Amazon, or you can get the digital download on my website.